first story tonight is being called a critical turning point in UFO studies in the Middle East. For millennia, Turkey has been a bridge between cultures, a crossroads between Europe and Asia. Boyness, but as you're about to see, it might also have been the meeting point between human civilization and extraterrestrial life. It's May 13, 2009. At night owl, Yolchin Yalman is stargazing in the suburbs of Istanbul, Turkey. Shortly after 3 a.m., something strange appears in the sky over the Sea of Marmara. Yolchin immediately grabs his Canon Mini DV camera, a videotape, and records this. It appears to be some sort of saucer-shaped craft. It's hovering silently for half an hour about a mile away and 500 feet above the sea. But watch what happens when Yolchin zooms in. Do you see that? Now take a look at the footage when we zoomed in and cleaned it up for you to get a better look. Yalchin says that what you are seeing here is a cockpit window. And there inside the alleged craft, he's saying you can see two aliens piloting this thing. Right here. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you got a light here. You got two aliens. Let's take a look at this. Hold on a second. Let's go back right there. So you got an alien right there. That guy's from the planet Mars. And then he's got his alien sister right next to him. I mean, pretty obvious, right? Well, here's the thing. Is that proof? I mean, really. Is that proof? Let's take a look at what proof looks like. Hi. Laptop thief. It's not enough that this man was a shoplifter. He also used his child as an accomplice. Now, that's a big fat no in the city of Chelyabinsk in southern Russia's Chelyabinsk Oblast. A thief uses his toddler as cover to steal a laptop from a computer shop. The very brave man shuts one of the laptops on display and hides it under his sweater, tucking it into his trousers. He then picks up his baby boy and holds him in front. There it is. That's it. Busted. Busted. That guy is busted. We got proof that he stole the laptop. I mean, that's proof, man. This? That's not proof. You can't say what that is. Now, if we're in a court of law, this guy's going to jail. Well, maybe. And this? No. This is a, this is a joke. You've got a light in the sky, and that's about all you can conclude from this image. You got a light. Heck, you, can you even say that's in the sky? That could be under somebody's toilet. Well, maybe. Lights turned off. This is not proof, right? But isn't it interesting that it seems like the whole world wants to believe that's a UFO alien it really does doesn't it? and so it just makes me wonder it just makes me wonder yeah this world is ripe for something incredibly deceptive really first Thessalonians 5 verse 21 we read Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Alright. Hold fast that which is good. Is that good? Alright, so here's the idea. And this is why I won't play this whole video, but th this is why people want to believe in it because they th see this and they imagine beings from heaven 
that are watching over us and these beings are going to save us and I believe it's this video where he talks about how they are here or they are going maybe it's somewhere else I read it but nevertheless they are here and in the future they're gonna educate us they're gonna give us knowledge and wisdom I mean, think about that yeah I should probably write a like a like a notepad or a spreadsheet or something where you know, you think about what are the consequences or what are what is the result or whatever what is the hope that people are putting in when they imagine these things are real and it's one to protect us two to save us and three to educate us in no particular order now you compare that with the Bible the Bible tells us educates us on the law and how to be redeemed from the law and how to be saved and it's very clear that God is watching over us now people don't want to believe in God so what do they do they replace God with the imaginary God and we we saw this I mean we see this all throughout the Bible really but in particular when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments and he saw all the people worshiping the golden calf they replaced God with an image and so also today people are wanting to make this image God John chapter 3 verse 19 and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil now this is exactly what's going on this is not proof this is evidence there is no evidence whatsoever of a UFO alien there's never been any not even a single piece of evidence this is not evidence this is not you can't even can you even prove this is a light in the sky I'd have to watch the whole video but from the clips that we're seeing there's no proof no evidence nothing to guarantee us that this is in the sky this could be looking down somebody's toilet bowl with the lights turned out no, we don't know it could be anything and then to look at these two little spots within this light and oh that's a it's a Martian got antennas on his head how, how, how are you that's only imagination man and this is the history channel look at 12 million subscribers you tell me they got no affiliation with the CIA come on this is incredible stuff but this is also you know another example of this world falling further and further away from God no question about it this world is falling further and further in deception and that's exactly what the Bible said says will happen evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived it's incredible really again in Matthew 24 Jesus is asked about the end of the world 
very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Right? False prophets, false teachers shall arise and deceive many. Because iniquity shall, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right? And uh, false Christ, false prophets, great signs and wonders, they shall deceive the very elect. Think about this. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And so what the Bible is clearly indicating is that there are going to be fewer and fewer people saved as we progress toward the end of the world. Insomuch that if God allowed the world to continue, there would be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In Luke 18, the question is asked, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith? on the earth question mark shall he find faith on the earth I mean that's a that's a heck of a question right there that's one heck of a question to be asking uh, you know back in the day I used to hear all this talk about a revival and I even heard people talk about how we're here to prepare the earth for the coming of the Lord Jesus no that's not what the Bible says the Bible says things will get worse and worse insomuch that if God didn't shorten the days that there would no flesh be saved think about in the days of Noah there was only eight souls saved And in the days of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, there wasn't even ten righteous. Not even ten. In, a, in the city and surrounding areas of millions of people, wasn't even ten righteous. And here we are again, living in a world where people want to believe. Oh, that's a UFO. Look at them. They might even be kissing. I mean, really, this here, what this guy's doing, the dumb, this stuff here is dumber. Don't fall for it.